In this video, we're building a display style vitrine case where you roll in and roll out your model trains. Hello and welcome to a video tutorial in which we will build a display for trains. Yeah, it's a kind of vitrine you can have on the wall. You can choose whatever length you want, what fits your layout or needs. Uh, as you might have noticed, this is not uh, 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 an episode in the Martinstown build. We completed the Martinstown uh, actually two episodes ago and the last episode was a layout tour. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. This can be used as an accessory, both to the Martinstown, which I've made preparations for there already, and to, I would say, any layout. There are many advantages with this um, uh, type of, of display uh, to, you know, store train in a, in a in a pretty way, you can have it on the on the wall, and uh, also since the train are are loaded onto the removable shelves of a, of the um, in this uh, display, it's excellent for you know these uh, if you have these uh, high speed trains or or three units locomotives engines, then you know how difficult it is to to take them off the tracks and and put them back into the boxes. It's it's most often that you damage something and with this type of, of vitrine or display there is no need for that. You just drive them into the display, put it on the wall. So that is the, the, the core values with one of these and it's really quick. Uh, I built this display which you will s now see uh, in eight hours total build time including purchasing. So really quick. So it's not a, a huge project. So it's really something I, I recommend everyone of you who have a need to store trains build one. Okay, so here are the materials needed to create this vitrine like display for trains or slash ferry boats. The frame, meaning the top, bottom and as well as um, the shelves are made from 15 by 56 millimeter spruce and the detachable shelves is made from 8 mm by 43 uh, also spruce. The frame of the V-train is uh, joined together using these uh, recessed uh, screws. They are 25 mm long and 3.5 mm in diameter. The transparent glass on each removable shelf is made from polycarbonate sheets. I selected 600 mm length because that will be the maximum length of my trains. If you want longer trains on your layout, you should have longer sheets of polycarbonate. We're starting the actual construction work by slicing this uh, polycarbonate sheet into width of 90 millimeters, meaning that uh, the construction I'm making here has a maximum height of the trains of 90 millimeters, including the tracks. That allows for electrical locomotives with pantographs up. Now, please be advised that the front glass is 90 mm tall, whilst the rear glass is only 85. That will allow us to slide the removable shelves back in. Do not push, but let just the saw work its way through the plastic and you will have a cut uh, like this. No need for sanding or anything, just uh, perfect uh, from start. Next we're gonna cut the spruce pieces for uh, the frame, meaning top, bottom and the fixed shelves. We cut them to 60 centimeters and I also add one extra millimeter for clearance around those uh, detachable shelves, which are exactly 60 centimeters. I cut all of the spruce pieces uh, using a miter saw. Uh, if you don't have access to a miter saw, like this one, or a, a motorized, then you need a carpenter square to draw a line which is perfectly 90 degree and then saw it by hand. The back piece is made from 4 millimeter plywood sheet and it will be cut uh, to a dimension corresponding to the outline of the display frame. 
When uh, cutting uh, thin plywood like this, there is always a big risk for fringing. One way to prevent that is to put masking tape over the cut edge like this. Then cut it out. Now let's go back to the frame. We will now mark the position for the screw holes in the side pieces. The screws will hold the display together and also the fixed shelves in place. The material thickness is 15 millimeters and half of that is 7.5. So that's where I make my mark. So I get my screws into the center of those uh, mating uh, surfaces and I use my carpenter square to draw a line and then mark the position for the screws along that line. Next up is to drill holes. Um, for this I'm using a, a three millimeter drill and I put the two side pieces on top of each other and drill the holes in both at once. If you don't have a pillar drilling machine or equivalent then uh, you will have to mark the position for the holes in both pieces and drill them individually in order to make sure that uh, holes gets all straight through. All right so here are the holes also in the other side piece. Now I'm using a, a seven millimeter drill to create the recess for the recessed screw heads. So I'm just uh, touching the surface with this uh, seven millimeter drill. And that will be enough. Now all of the pieces are cut out to length and also got holes for assembly. Then it's time to paint them. And for this display, I'm choosing a black paint, which we previously have used to create both a water effect and also paint mountains and landscape. I mix this uh, black acrylic paint with about 50% water. So one part water and one part paint. And then I paint all of the surfaces using this uh, black paint. Now you can of course uh, choose not to paint your uh, uh, display or paint it white or whatever color of your preference. However, you can leave the underside of the removable shelf pieces unpainted. Assemble the screws into the pre-drilled holes and then screw them all the way down until they just barely look through the hole on the other side. I apply some PVA glue to increase stability of the frame before assembly. Then I just screw the screws tight. Now we got a U frame here. Uh, we're gonna start the assembly of the fixed shelves. In order to get the dimension exactly what we want, I'm uh, cutting a jig, which is uh, 91 millimeter, which is uh, 90 millimeter for the glass windows plus one millimeter for the clearance. And then I use that uh, jig when assembly the fixed shelves like this. And then I move the same jig to the other side and I screw that. Once completed, it all looks like this. Now, next thing to do is to assembly light into this. Um, for this I'm using low cost uh, LED strips uh, with uh, for 12 volt uh, power supply. These ones I bought at Wish. They were super cheap, like uh, $2 for 10 meters. And they're warm white, 2700 2, Kelvin warm white LEDs. So I'm cutting these in the position of the LED strips where they are supposed to be cut. There are marks for that, most often a scissor symbol. And then I remove the cover tape and use the adhesive to fix it about five millimeters from the edge, the front edge of the display. 5mm will allow for both the glass, which is 3mm thick, and a 2mm wide glare protection, which we will assemble later. But first, we're 
soldering cables to the outlets or connections to on this LED strip. So I'm using red cables for the plus side and black for the minus. And then I mark the position on the rear piece of this uh, display to drill a 3.5 millimeter hole to let the cables through. And thereby we're ready to assemble this uh, rear piece of this uh, display. And uh, like with the fixed shelves and the frame, I'm using PVA glue before I screw the rear piece onto the frame and also to the fixed shelves. And uh, then we're ready to have a look at what this looks like. Here I put one of the removable shelves in place with a piece of track and a locomotive. What disturbed me a bit was uh, that uh, I was kind of blinded by the LEDs. So I decided to add a two by two millimeter spruce in front of the LEDs. So these can be bought in the aero modeling section of your hobby shop. And uh, all I need to do is to paint three sides black and then I can just glue it in place edge to edge with that LED strip. Yeah, now it looks very nice with this uh, matte um, surface, but uh, it, I know by experience that it will be very hard to clean and over time it will turn all gray and dirty. So what we need to do is to add a few layers of varnish on top. This is the varnish I got over after completing the water effect we did previously in this series, How to Build Martin's Town. I added uh, three layers here uh, on the frame before I was uh, happy with the surface. Now, next thing we're gonna do is uh, to assemble tracks onto the removable shelves. And you will have to find the track section which fits the length of your removable shelves. These ones were 600 millimeters, so pretty easy. Only three sections of uh, 172 and 184. So I fix them to the shelves using fast set glue like this and I center them onto this uh, removable shelf. Next thing is to add the glass pieces or the polycarbonate, transparent polycarbonate on the sides. For this I'm using uh, double side adhesive tape which is uh, also transparent. I couldn't find any tape which had the same dimension width as this uh, piece of uh, wood. So instead I cut them to widths in place. Make sure to position the glass accurately before you push it into the double side adhesive tape. It will bond instantly and uh, it will not be possible to correct any errors. And once you've completed one side, it's just to add adhesive tape to the other side and add that glass as well. Now make sure to add the taller glass, the 90 millimeter glass for the front side and the lower glass, which is only 85 millimeter on the rear side. Otherwise you will not be able to slide this uh, removable shelf into position properly. It will hit the LED and the glare protection. So that's a word of advice. In order to be able to pull these uh, removable shelves out from the display, we need to add two screws, one in each end of uh, the removable shelf. With that done, we're ready to load the first train onto one of these shelves. Once the train is fully in, deattach this uh, removable shelf and insert it into the display like this. The removable shelves can also be used for storing uh, locomotives not currently on duty, as well as uh, high speed uh, long trains and commuter trains, which easily gets damaged when removed from the tracks. 
This is also very valid for triple unit engines or locomotives, which also is very easy to damage when handled off tracks. Look here. The front and the rear glass prevents the train from derailing, even though it's tilted severely during handling. And that concludes this build of this uh, display slash ferry boat. All right, so not all that complicated. And as I said, to start with, uh, the total build was eight hours. So, uh, you know, it's not a fancy piece of furniture, but it definitely does the job. And it looks pretty on the wall where it uh, holds your uh, trains. Uh, and also, uh, in, the, in the next episode, we will uh, focus a bit on the uh, operations. Uh, we can run now once we have these removable shelves and can connect them to the layout using them as ferry boats. So you can have a, a circulation of freight cars uh, to the different destinations on the layout, but also going off uh, to other towns via this uh, ferry boat option. So um, we will have a look at that, plus a number of other ways to to operate the Martinstown layout. And the cost for this uh, uh, display was like, <laughs> the, the most expensive part was actually the track sections for the removable uh, shelves. So that says something about it. Did you know that this channel is totally dependent on support from viewers like you? So if you're watching this channel regularly, think of it as a magazine subscription. Get over to Patreon and set up a support account there from, you know, like $1 per month. Or make a one-off donation via the PayPal dialogue found in the video description below. Again, a big thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe and enable that little bell and you will get a, a notification once the next video gets published. Until that happens, see you.